Hello everyone. Today in animal physiology, we will be discussing about the physiology of vision. Okay. So, so before discussing regarding the physiology of eye, it is important to understand the structure of the eye. When you look at the structure of the eye, we majorly divide the eye is made up of three important layers. Number one, outer fibrous layer, middle vascular layer, and innermost nervous layer. So this is a picture which explains to you regarding various parts of the eye. So you can see a lens here and these are the three layers I was talking to you, sclera, choroid and retina. And uh, retina is the innermost layer which is very important for us uh, while understanding the physiology of vision. All these parts we have already studied in the previous classes. So just for the reference I have put this picture. Now. The outermost fibrous layer, as we have seen in the picture, it is made up of sclera and uh, cornea. Sclera is the tough covering on posterior lateral sides of the eye. And uh, the cornea helps in light to enter in and focus light onto the lens. Now the middle vascular layer, it is mainly made up of three parts. Choroid, ciliary body and the iris. Okay, So you can just go through these points which I have explained in the previous classes. Now innermost layer, it is the very, very important layer with respect to the physiology of vision concerned. Now this layer, it's majorly, it is termed as the light sensitive layer, okay? So this light sensitive layer, it is majorly made up of what are known as the neurons. In fact, they are photosensitive neurons. They are arranged on a pigmented layer. Okay, so there is a pigmented layer on that the neurons are arranged in the innermost layer that is known as the light sensitive layer. So that this light sensitive layer, it is also termed as the retina. Now retina along with the light sensitive uh, cells are the neurons. It has two important spots that are present on it. One is the optic disc. This is a region, it is also termed as the blind spot. Okay, so this is the region where there is a zero vision. Okay, so that's the reason we call it as blind spot. And this is a spot where exactly the optic nerve leaves the eye. Okay, now the second important layer, uh, the second important spot, uh, the region is the macula lutea. It is also called as the fossalis, fossa centralis, and this is the uh, region of sharpest vision. Okay, so apart from that, the retina is made up of two important layers. One is the pigmented layer, it is actually the non visual portion of the retina, and the light sensitive layer, which is the visual portion of the retina. Okay, so let us look at the very important part. Uh, that is the retina. So as I have told you, there is a pigmented layer as a, what I'm showing here, this is the pigmented layer. And there is a photosensitive layer. So this photosensitive layer is important for us. It is divided into three important regions. Number one, outer layer, middle layer, and the last one is the inner layer. Okay. So the outer layer, it mainly consists of the photosensitive neurons and uh, these are called rods and cones and this is the cone and this is the rod okay so this outer layer outer layer of the retina is the photosensitive layer is the first layer to receive the light okay and the second layer is known as the middle layer as you can see here there are bipolar neurons that are present and the innermost layer that is known as the a ganglionic layer in fact ganglionic cell layers okay so the photosensitive layer having rods and cones bipolar uh, neurons and ganglionic cells and you can see two synaptic layers that are present here okay so we shall understand how exactly the light reaches and uh, brings about a stimulus here and how the image is formed in the brain that we need to understand in the physiology of vision okay now this light sensitive layer as we have seen in the previous picture, there are three layers, two synaptic zones, what are, which are the three layers, photoreceptor layer, bipolar layer and the ganglionic cell layer. And the photoreceptor layer, as I have told, shown you there, rods and cones are present, numbers I have given there. And there are also omocrine cells and horizontal cells, which increase the sharpness of, sharpness of the vision. And uh, so this point is important. The light passes through the ganglionic cell layer 
it is uh, passes through the ganglionic cell layer and the bipolar layer before reaching the photoreceptor layer. Remember students, I told you photoreceptor layer is the first layer which gets stimulated by the light. Now, the nerve impulse that is generated once the uh, light strikes the rods and cones, the nerve impulse that is generated travels in a reverse direction. So the direction of the light entry into the eye, it uh, into the retina was from the ganglionic cells to the bipolar cells, bipolar cells to the uh, photoreceptor cells at the rods and cones. Now the stimulus, nerve impulse that is uh, generated, it travels in the opposite direction. Okay, and regarding the rods, the rods are very important cells which are active in the dim light. Uh, they cause black and white vision, and the cones are. Uh, responsible for sharpness of the vision and they bring about colored vision okay so these are the points briefly i listed out here regarding the structure of the lens you can just go through them pause the video and just go through these points now let us come to the main part of our class that is the physiological aspect of how exactly the picture uh, depicted by the brain through the eye okay so now so with respect to the physiology, it takes place under three important stages. Number one, phototransduction. Number two, processing and transmission of the visual sensation. And number three, uh, visual perception. Okay, so these are the three important uh, stages. You can see the phototransduction means conversion of light energy into the nerve impulse, light energy that passes from the object, reflected by the object into the eye. It reaches the retina. In the retina, it gets converted into a nerve impulse, and that nerve impulse has to travel to the brain visual region. There, the image uh, depiction occurs. And the second one, the processing and transmission of visual sensation transmission from eye through the optic nerve to the brain okay so the third one is visual perception that is an integration of various aspects of the vision that occurs in the brain now the photo uh, the rods and cones uh, photoreceptor cells they consist of what are known as the photosensitive pigments and these pigments are mainly having two important components one is opsin which is a transmembrane glycoprotein either in the form of photopsin or in the form of scotopsin okay and it is associated with a cofactor called as the retinol retinol aldehyde so it is derived from the vitamin a okay now this um, rods and cones consisting of photosensitive pigments on reception of the uh, light light energy or the photons they undergo structural changes to bring about the visual perception okay so the rods contain rhodopsin and the cones have three different types of photo pigments and these photo pigments undergo structural changes to bring about the vision now when we consider the vision equity of the eye so the uh, retinal layer is sensitive for the light between blue to green in fact blue green and red these are the major colors that are very well perceived by the uh, light and the combination of these uh, light perceptions results in a uh, perception of the other color okay the now the retinal that is present in association with the pigments it exists in two important forms one is a cis retinal another one is a trans retinal okay so usually it exists in the cis retinal form but once it absorbs the light it becomes trans retinal okay now the trans retinal once it is formed after striking of the light it becomes bleached or it becomes colorless what do you mean by the bleaching it just means that it is no longer respond to the light stimulus again unless it is converted into cis form this is the first step of uh, the light stimulus once it enters into the photosensitive cells okay next point is the trans retinol is converted back to the cis retinol when there is no light stimulus okay now this formation of cis retinol again is what is known as regeneration okay so and for these reactions retinal isomerase enzyme is very very essential now for the regeneration of the uh, cis retinol the rods and cones are supplied with the vitamin a that results in regeneration of the photo pigment okay 
in the photopigment photopsin in the cones and discotopsin in the rods. Now the conversion of cis retinol to trans retinol generates an action potential. Now the process when the light entered in onto the photoreceptor cells that cis retinol got converted into trans retinol that results in generation of an action potential bringing about depolarization. So in this uh, chart you can see the cis retinol that is present along with the opsin now it gets bleached on absorption of the light and gets converted into what is known as trans retinol this results in generation of action potential okay so soon once the light is gone now the regeneration of cis retinol takes place and cis retinol is ready for the next cycle okay now as i told you so this is the cis form of the retinol you can see here the highlighted portion uh, there is a bent in the carbon chain now as soon as the light strikes this cis form becomes a transform and you can see the change in the structure okay now in this picture you can see this is a rod so the rods on the upper portion they have what are known as the stacked vesicles and these stacked vesicles they consist of the retinol you can see this the pink uh, structure this is the cis retinol on striking of the light this cis retinol becomes uh, the carbon chain becomes straight and that results in generation of the action potential now the reaction i have uh, depicted here you can see the cis retinol present in the form of rhodopsin on striking of the right becomes various forms of rhodopsin and finally it gets converted into trans retinol this uh, stimulates transducin the transducin that is stimulated stimulates the cyclic gmp into gmp and in presence of phosphodiesterase and that uh, in in fact it process uh, it stimulates a series of reactions resulting in what is known as the stimulus being passed to the brain now let us see the flow chart what are the events that occur on striking of the light into the retinal layer okay the first step the light that uh, is reflected by the various objects so usually our eye is sensitive to the light between 380 to 720 nanometer so 380 is very uh, bluish color light and uh, the 720 is the dark red okay so it is sensitive to the um, various other colors come in between this okay and be below this and above this the light cannot sense infrared and it is the ultraviolet so it cannot be sensed by the eye now once the light enters into the eye there is refraction of light because it is passing through vitreous humor aqueous humor lens and uh, later it is reaching the retina so there is bending of the light that is what we term as refraction of light and while the light passes through the lens the lens gets accommodated to bring the light rays onto the retina okay and there is convergence through binocular vision finally once the light strikes the retinal layer that results in what is known as the photochemical activity let us see the photochemical activity that occurs in the rods the vision of the rods is known as the scotopic vision and now see in the rods we have rhodopsin which is a combination of scotopsin and retinol now once the light strikes enzyme activation takes place it activates the transducin as you can see there is activation of phosphodiesterase enzyme now the phosphodiesterase enzyme results in hydrolysis of cyclic gmp hydrolysis of cyclic gmp brings about what is known as the stopping of sodium ion flow into the rods this stoppage of sodium ions flow into the rods results in hyperpolarized state that in turn transmit the neural signal to the brain okay so this hyperpolarization results in formation of uh, action potential and neuronal impulse and that impulse passes through the layers of the uh, retina reaching the brain okay now what happens in the cones the cones consist of the photopsin and retinol that is the iodopsin and now see in uh, cones especially the perception of color so they, they are responsible for colored vision i told you it depends on which cone is stimulated among the three okay so they are sensitive to three important lights as i've told you in the previous slide and the combination of these three 
may also result in particular color vision okay now so this stimulus of the cone results in enzyme activation transducing activation phosphodiesterate and hydrolysis uh, diesterase activation this brings about hydrolysis of cyclic gmp which in turn stops the entry of uh, sodium ions into the rods that again brings about hyperpolarization and finally generates an action potential and neuronal signal that is uh, formed passes through the various layers of the uh, retina reaching the optic nerve through the optic nerve it reaches the brain now now this once the light strikes as i have told you there is generation of the nerve impulse and this nerve impulse from the photoreceptor layer reaches the second layer of the retina that is a bipolar neurons and the horizontal cells from this second layer it goes to the third layer that is the ganglionic cell layer in the ganglionic cell layer once it receives the stimulus it gets depolarized and gets depolarized and transmit the uh, the uh, stimulus through its axon which forms the optic nerve the optic nerve carries the uh, information in the form of action potential or the nerve impulse to the brain where the image is interpreted now in this picture you are able to see the for the stimulus that is for, from the optic nerve passes through the brain through the optic nerve you can see the left eye it passes to the right side of the brain and the right eye it passes to the left left side of the brain so while it is passing it passes through optic chiasma where the left and the right uh, optic nerve cross each other and optic tract and you can see the geniculate body superior calliculus and optic radiation finally reaches the visual cortical region of the uh, brain okay so here the image interpretation takes place if you look at the first slide of the presentation you'll be clearly able to understand so that is in presence of the light what happens in the rods and the cones what about when there is light stimulus absent in in the absence of light stimulus the recovery instead of transducing the recovery activates gonadotropin light cyclase and this gonadotropin light cyclase catalyzes synthesis of cyclic gmp and now this cyclic gmp synthesized causes sodium channels to open now there is flow of sodium ions into the rods and cones this is called as the dark current and sodium current that stimulates the release of the neurotransmitter glutamic acid so this was not the case when the light strike okay so in absence of the light the glutamic acid is secreted which is an inhibitory uh, neurotransmitter brings about hyperpolarization of bipolar neurons as a result light stimulate cannot be received okay so like this once the light um, comes to the uh, the retina passes through the three layers and there is a generation of impulse which uh, resends the nerve impulse back through the three layers from photoreceptor to bipolar bipolar to ganglionic layer the optic nerve carries the information to the brain and the interpretation of the image takes place inside the brain this is uh, briefly regarding the physiology of vision thank you all